Robert Mills Gagne was an American educator born in 1916 whose studies of learning and instruction profoundly affected American schooling. Gagne was best known for his conditions of learning theory. Gagne's conditions of learning states that there are several different types of learning. Verbal information, intellectual skills, cognitive strategies, motor skills, and attitudes. Gagne's theory covers all aspects of learning but focuses mainly on intellectual skills. Gagne states that each of these types of learning requires a different method of instruction. Gagne suggests that learning tasks for intellectual skills can be organized in a hierarchy according to complexity. Stimulus recognition, response generation, procedure following, use of terminology, discriminations, concept formation, rule application, and problem solving. The primary significance of the hierarchy is to identify prerequisites that should be completed to facilitate learning at each level. In addition to the sequencing of instruction, the theory outlines nine instructional events and corresponding cognitive processes. The first is gaining attention, and the corresponding cognitive process is reception. The second is informing learners of an object objective, and the cognitive process is expectancy. The third is stimulating recall of prior learning, and the corresponding cognitive process is retrieval. Presenting the stimulus and the corresponding cognitive processes are selective perception, providing learning guidance, and the cognitive process is semantic encoding, and eliciting performance, and the cognitive process is responding. The last three are providing feedback, and the corresponding cognitive process is reinforcement, assessing performance, and the cognitive process is retrieval, and the last one is enhancing retention and transfer, and the cognitive process is generalization. You might be wondering how you can apply Gagne's instructional events to the classroom. Um, the following nine slides are give examples of how you can apply his instructional events to teaching students how to recognize equilateral triangles. The first is gain attention, and you can do this by showing a variety of computer-generated triangles. The next is identify objective. You can pose a question, what is an equilateral triangle? Next, we have recall prior learning, and you can do this by reviewing definitions of different triangles. Next is present the stimulus, give definitions of equilateral triangles. Guide learning, show examples of how to create an equilateral. Elicit performance, ask students to create five different examples. Provide feedback, check all examples as correct or incorrect. Assess performance, provide scores and remediation. 
Enhance retention and transfer by showing pictures of objects and asking students to identify the equilaterals.